The Boxster was launched in 1996, nearly 30 years ago. So we've had 28 years or so of two-seat mid-engine convertible sports car excellence from Porsche with all the engineering idiosyncrasies and quirks and qualities and charisma that we love about the Mark. So in this two-part video, I'm going to show you 30 or so hacks, hints and tips about these wonderful cars and their siblings, the Cayman and 911, so that we owners can get the most from our fantastic cars. <laughs> Welcome to Project 91 and welcome back to the channel. Now, whether you've owned your Porsche for a day or perhaps a decade, there's no end to the qualities and quirks and general knowledge that we accrue as owners. And that knowledge helps us understand and enjoy the cars ever more, both as things to own and to drive. So in this two part video, I'm going to share 30 or so hacks, hints and tips that I've learned, come across, read about and been told myself about these cars that generally allow us to get more from them and improve our ownership and driving experience. Now, a couple of points is worth saying at this stage. If you know these things, well, you already know them, you're ahead of me and you're already making the most of your cars. But if you don't, and it's surprising how long it took me to learn all these things, then saying it out loud, seeing it on a video will definitely help and improve your own experience. The other thing is worth saying, of course, is that this is a 981 Boxster. So uh, 2012, 2016, same era as the Cayman, its sibling, and contemporary to the 991 generation 911. And much of what are in these two videos applies to all three of those cars. And also through my own experience as a 997 owner, that's the early 911, and a 987 Boxster owner, earlier Boxster, applies to those two. So we're covering a period from maybe the mid noughties 2005, 2006, through to 2016. In fact, beyond because the 718, the new Cayman and Boxster, largely the same as this car. So there's a huge chunk of information that I hope to share with you in these two videos, which will be applicable to a lot of owners, a lot of cars. Let's make a start. Hack hint and tip number one, and it's a pure convertible one to start with. It's getting the car ready to drive and it's basically the one about opening the roof so if you want to unlock the car press and hold the unlock button and the car will not only unlock itself but it'll get itself ready for some awesome convertible motoring by lowering the roof so keep pressing the button until the roof's down the windows go back up and you're all set now, needless to say, this works in reverse too. So if you want to lock the car, press and hold the lock button. And the roof will return to the up position. Again, keep holding the button until the windows go up. You're all done. Okay, off we go with the next one. Now this is obvious if you know it, but if you don't, well, one of those things. Time to put some fuel in. Let's open up the wing. There's a fuel filler cap. Undo that, mine's a quarter turn, and pop it out. And you'll see on the end a little point, and that is designed to go in there. So the cap doesn't dangle and damage your paintwork. Also a good time to check the cord that keeps it on. Mine is looking a little bit frayed. Maybe it's time to replace it. Okay, number three. Now, for some reason, because of an electrical failure, this won't open. Porsche have actually provided an analog manual backup. If you open the, on my car, the driver's door, the right-hand side of the car, you can see a little toggle just hidden in there, which is the emergency release. Give it, pull it out. It comes out like that. There's then a cable attached to that. Give it a little pull, and it'll pop open the fuel filler cap. Easy peasy. Okay, on we go, number four. Now, Porsche have designed the scuttle on their car so that we can still put the wiper arms up. Should we want to do a bit of blade replacement or generally have a bit of a clean around under here? But just be careful because it puts the arm in quite close proximity to the, the front of the car, the, the, the hood, or indeed the bonnet. 
Now that in itself is not a problem, but if you then decide that you want to open the bonnet, you have to be really careful because if you do that, you could be into a world of pain. And the world of pain comes from the fact that if you now lift the bonnet, it will interfere here and you can end up damaging the paintwork on the trailing edge of the bonnet there. So basically this little hack, hint and tip is do not ever, I speak from experience, open the front bonnets with the wiper blade arms up. Always make sure they're down. Okay, on we go. So having carefully lowered the wiper arms, we can now open the bonnet. And if we want to get under here, well, you know how to do that. Just pop the two clips left and right, and that allows this to come up. Now, if you're somewhere where it's windy or muddy or wet, and you don't want to take this out of the car, Porsche will thought that through. So here we go. Tip it up. Underneath is a little yellow plastic arm. Unclip it, just pops out, swing it round, there's a little hook on the end. And that, with a bit of a careful shuffle, can clip up like that. Et voila. Okay, there's a little bonus for you. So you've done what you need to do under the front, you've placed this back down. Always requires a bit of a jiggle to get it in, doesn't it? But once you're sort of l roughly lined up, gentle press there, and there and it's in but here's the little bonus item this seal designed to go over the top of this plastic trim so once you've clipped it back into place just with your fingers roll the seal up and it'll sit back on top of the plastic as it does around the rest of the trim here so we're all nice and watertight Moving on, and number six. Now, most of you will know this, but if you've just bought your car, you might not. Most of us don't drive our Porsches every day, so they sit in the garage on the driveway. And the battery, meh, doesn't like that particularly. All the cars are better off with a fully charged battery. So get it on a battery conditioner. Not just a charger, a conditioner will constantly monitor the battery and top it up as required. This is a CTEC, it's an MXS 3.8, but there are other CTEC models and there are other models of conditioner on the market. I've bought the extension cable too. I'll show you in a moment where that goes. But basically, unless you're driving your car every day, do yourself a favor and get the battery on a conditioner. Now, a couple of bonus items for you here. We're back under the front and there's various schools of thought about Porsche batteries and warranties and non-Porsche batteries and coding batteries and all sorts of how's your father. Basically, get a decent quality battery and get on a conditioner. Now, there's also schools of thought about how you get the charge into the battery. I've previously used a cigarette lighter into the foot well socket in the driver's, no, I tell a lie, the passenger side, and it sort of works, but it can switch off. And yeah, anyway, what I've ended up doing is with the CTEC eyelet adapter, I have wired it into the car. So I've put the positive with a little eyelet on the positive terminal and as per recommendations, forums, the handbook, X, Y, Z, I put the uh, negative, I think that's negative, uh, I'm not very good at electrics, <laughs> onto this specific uh, turret here. I can't remember whether it's an M8, it might be a six, M M6, M8 bolt. Anyway, either way, that's then available and I will show you in a second how that goes. But what it does allow me to do is then poke it through this gap in the trim, which we saw a moment ago, and that went focus. And it then allows me to charge it under the bonnet. So there it is, trim back in place. Literally just poke this through, and there's enough slack on the end to then attach the cable, which you can then poke out through the slightly lower bit of the scuttle trim and away either side to where your conditioner is ready and waiting. Works a treat. And the final bonus bonus on charging is once the car's in the garage and you're charged up, because I take the wire out the side of the car, 
I don't want to scratch the paintwork and yeah it can do if you're not careful I've had a got a bit of fabric made it into a tube run the cable through it so it kind of doesn't really sit on the shoulder of the wing no more scratching and while we're still in the front area a little tip upgrade yeah not sure doesn't really matter the stock bulbs in the 981 generation certainly the 997 98 7 front and boot for these little lights were slightly sort of dirty yellow which is a old school bulb i have replaced it with an led bulb that does the job rather well and has the added benefit of giving the interior a nice white contemporary look i've done that here in the front i've done it in the boot and if you've watched my earlier video about the footwell lights you'll know i've put the led bulbs in the footwell lights too and all just generally lifts and modernizes the ambiance here's the same light in the boot rather overexposed because the sun's out i'll pop in the description a link to design 911 for uk and european buyers i think sun coast porsche on the west coast in the us are quite good for the led bulbs too but your local supplier should also be able to help So let's briefly talk about tyre pressures. Now, let's say the temperature has dropped or indeed risen outside. You want to adjust your tyre pressures. You put some air in the tyres, let some out. You need to let the car know that. Sometimes it helps us to tell the car to actively relearn the tyre pressures, but there's not an option for that directly. You have to sort of fudge it. How do you do that? Right, first of all, go to your TPM screen if you've got this fitted to your car. Now mine is showing blank because I'm mucking around making videos and I've already cleared those settings but what you need to do that should show you some remembered or residual values from before. Go into that menu, come down, I've got the 20 inch summer tyres on, select tyre type. Now what you're trying to do here is select A and other, it doesn't matter which one you choose, another type of tyre. Select that and then come out and that is what you need to do. That will force the car to learn. But of course, you've now selected it for the wrong tire type. So click away from that, come back down to the tire you've actually got on the car, select that, and it'll now, once again, force the tire pressures to be read actively for the tires you've just put uh, air into or let out of on your car. Uh, when you're driving along, it'll do it automatically and you can see there's a little flashing light. It's got a lot of sunlight going on here on the left-hand screen there and it'll relearn it um, in due course. Now, once you find yourself back at the screen, you might notice there's a little tick box, comfort press below the tyre type we've selected. That's comfort pressure, which is a thing, and it's probably best described by me showing you a badge on the door frame. But comfort pressure is the thing we want to remember at this point. So I've opened the driver's door and there's the badge, the sticker I was referring to. It's got the tyre pressures for your car on it. At the top is the unspeed restricted recommended pressures, bar or PSI, 33 PSI, is what I tend to use in my head. And below that, with a speed restriction, 160 miles an hour in this case, uh, is a lower set of pressure, 2.1 bar, 30 psi. Nice and easy to remember on the box because the same on the front and rear axle. But it's 30, so it's a little bit softer. So there's less air in the tyre. The tyre is a smidgen less firm. In other words, a little bit more compliant. And I think that's where the comfort comes from. Certainly that's what it says in the handbook. So if you've put your summer tyres to 30 psi, let's now swing back round and look again here not only do you want to tell the car to actively recheck that pressure but if you move the menu down to comfort pressure and select that you're telling the car that you're back with the 20 inch summer tire but you've inflated them to the comfort pressure and it'll relearn that specifically and you can come out of there and it's just a toggle so you push away to toggle off and yet again it'll relearn so that's proving the relearn point there but that's your little comfort pressure option if you fancy a little bit more creasing and a little less hooning. 
So number 10, the final little tyre hack, hint and tip. It's to check the expiry date on your tyre gunk, your tyre foam. This is the storage compartment from the front. This is my tyre foam and uh, this is another brand. But the crucial thing you're looking for is the expiry date. And on my one, I can simultaneously focus the camera and talk to camera. It's the 20th of January 2026, so that's still fine for another 18 months or so. Um, now, whether you buy Porsche stuff or VW stuff or aftermarket, it's all basically the same, so you can't go too far wrong. And this is a good opportunity to also make sure that you've got, in this case, a spare valve and the little cap. And my handy hint and tip at this point was, and indeed is, to line the aperture for the gunk with some workshop gloves, which will do the job of giving it a nice firm fit and simultaneously keeping your hands clean should you get a puncture. And that is tire foam. Right, almost done with tires, but a little bit of a bonus item, and that's valve stems and badges. Now, if you know this, you'll know it, but again, if you don't, you won't. So there's a thing that Porsche owners do, and it may be that other owners of other cars do it too, which is to point and therefore adjust the badge, the center hub badge, so that the base of the badge points to the valve stem. And if you have locking wheel nuts, I have, there it is, you place the locking wheel nut in that line. Now why? I guess it's if you want to find the valve stem quickly, you simply look at the badge and there it is, likewise locking wheel nut. It's also kind of neat and tidy and if you do the same on each wheel then all the wheels look the same. Does it matter? No. Does it make the cars faster? No. Will anyone else but Porsche people notice? <laughs> no. But I've done it and if it matters to you, you can do it too. Badge, bolt, valve stem. So we're making progress, 10 down and a fair few more to go. If you're enjoying the video, do give me a like. If you fancy seeing more of this stuff, please subscribe to the channel while you're here. OK, on we go, number 11, and we're going to talk about storage. I've hopped into the passenger seat of my car. Now, it's kind of obvious, but it's just probably worth repeating that we do have quite a lot of storage in the Boxster, which makes it a great touring car as well as a great sports car. Uh, the main storage area, the one that's obvious for passengers, is here. Um, wallet, phone, sunglasses. In my earlier Boxster, there was a little, little cutaway in here in the sill. You could put a, a phone in. That was quite useful. And obviously one on the driver's side too. There is also this pop-out pocket um, which people sometimes overlook. I think that dates as a, as a feature from the early 911s, uh, but it gives a little bit of extra space too, which is great. And then obviously the main bulk of the storage is in the glove box. Uh, and, and there's mine, there's various bits and pieces in here. Being an old duffer, I have a pair of reading glasses. I even have admission on YouTube, a pair of driving gloves because I do actually get quite cold hands in the winter driving, but more importantly, perhaps, I do actually have a pair of these powder fire extinguishers, the ones where you take the ends off and pop the caps, and I can see those are still in date, so that's good. So those go in there, and actually on the theme of safety, I do also have, or I do keep it in the driver's side, in here, one of these sort of little emergency hammers, so that's for breaking windows, and there's a little bit of a blade for cutting seat belts. So that goes on my side as well, just in case I have to hammer my way out of my own Porsche or maybe help somebody else out of their car instead. So plenty of space. It should also be worth saying that depending on where the seat position is, you can store stuff behind the passenger seat and indeed the driver's seat. Um, one suggestion, get yourself these sort of flat packing things. That These are by Eagle Creek. I think they're called cubes. Uh, quite nice, keeps it all in shape and in place. Um, so that's a, a, a useful sort of way to approach it. But if you do put stuff behind the seat, make sure your passenger knows, because nothing worse than putting something valuable or fragile in here, putting it behind the seat, and then a passenger gets in, maybe the seat's a bit further forward, and they go, oh, I can put my seat all the way back, do that, and lo and behold, your valuables get mashed and crashed. Not worth doing, done it before. So that is the storage, and if you knew all that, 
happy days. If you've learned something, my pleasure. Number 12, now no hacks, hints and tips video about a Porsche would be complete without mentioning the cup holders. You know that already, but I'll just go through the drill just in case. So, two cup holders, one for the passenger, one for the driver. You can adjust the size of it and that's all straightforward. Uh, well, what you might not know and does sometimes get overlooked is that you can then push that back up because of course it's all about the looks. So you don't have to have the ugly but very clever mechanism showing you can push it back up and it works. Needless to say, come on little thing, you're showing me up now. It works um, whether you've got one or both open so you can just close. I mean, this is just lovely little catch there, it just works. You can close, close it back up and then you've just got your driver's cup in position. I would say avoid big steaming milky drinks because this is good but you've got some expensive electronics here and you really don't want milky slop no one likes that anyway that's the cup holders now you know on we go okay number 13 you're in the car the roof's up it's dark you're driving you've got the wind deflector still in place but it's yeah compromising rear visibility but here's the hack you can take it out with the roof in place it's easy enough to do but don't rush it do it carefully just pop one side and lift it up and then the other side will come undone of its own accord lift it up as far as your fingers will allow rotate it backwards slide it forwards and now you have a nice clear rear view and by the way if you want to store that just temporarily my suggestion is you pop it behind the passenger seat now if you've watched my autumn update you'll know there's a better way to manage your rear mirror visibility at night and that's to actually take out the OEM wind deflector and replace it with a clear one or in this case a tinted one so do check out the autumn update video for details of that it's also possible to take out the mesh panels those and i shall show you how so as i said if you want the full wind in your hair experience get the roof down take out the central wind deflector drop the windows and then we can take these out how do you do that really easy they go from the back to the front. The best thing to do is just use your fingers like that around here to support the bottom and the top. And then with your other hand, just very gently push. They are flexible. Push the middle and it'll just come away. And what we're doing is just bending the panel enough to release the two feet at the bottom and a little hook at the top. Quite hard to get this wrong, but that's how you do it. And then with those out on both sides, there's a lot of fresh air available for you and your passenger putting them back in. They are asymmetrical, so they only go one way, and that is from the front to the back of the car. Place the feet in, push it up, and then literally just push the top. Clip and click, and you are done. And that is how to get the full windy experience in your Boxster. Moving on, okay, we're back inside the car again. Now this is a general comment for anybody who's got either the standard air conditioning and ventilation or the dual climate when it applies to both. You can turn it all off. There's no off button. Well, not obviously, but there is a way to turn it all off. And that is simply to lower the fan speed. So take the fan speed button. I think if you've got the dual zone, it's in the middle, but for me, it's on the right. Either way, get on the fan, lower it, lower it, lower it. And the last one will turn it all off. And of course, the simple way to turn it back on again is to just nudge it back up. Now bonus at this point if you've got the convertible Boxster or 911 there's no point in wasting energy air conditioning the atmosphere so if you've got the roof down turn your air conditioning off and if you want some heat to your hands or feet you can select that or if it's a nice hot sunny day pop out all those wind deflectors and actually just turn the whole thing off which will dump the air conditioning too so everything's off and you can just enjoy your wonderful Boxster.
So next up is parking sensors, as you can probably hear. Cars in the garage, it's all parked up, charges on, good to be left for a day or two. But because it's a garage, there are beeps because the parking sensors can, well, they're getting a bit fretty, fretty, aren't they? Anyway, here's what you need to know. Look up at the top to the right of the map light is the off button. Let's just press that. Ah, oh, blessed relief. That solves that problem. And actually, one other thing to be aware of, I'm not going to demonstrate this, but take my word for it. The parking sensor tone for the front of the car is different to the parking sensor tone for the rear of the car. So what you can hear when that's on is one set of sensors getting hissy. But if you then have somebody walk around the car, you'll hear that the front sensor is a different pitch to the rear, which along with the visual representation that you can get on the screen, gives you a sense of whether you're getting too close front or back. Okay, moving on, it squeaks and rattles and knocks. And one of the most popular areas for that is the seatbelt buckle. Now, most cars have had this done in some form or other, but if this knocks against the sidewall, that can be annoying. In my car, it also squeaks against the leather, the plastic on leather, it's not a happy combination. So what I've done is I've put a soft velcro that is to say the not the hooky side the other side on the back of the buckle to protect protect the sidewall sort of doing the job um, and then i put a little bit of self-adhesive felt uh, from a craft shop actually on the base of that just to stop it squeaking on the leather and that is now wonderfully quiet and doesn't annoy me now one other thing that tends to annoy drivers is the passenger seat belt buckle now here's what i prepared earlier uh where is it there it is rattling against the b pillar let me just pop around and show you that so what happens is you're driving along and this just does it just just does that because you're driving with a bit of vigor and it's annoying now the way to solve that which you probably already know is you just use the the restraint you push it all the way to the top and get the buckle to sit. I can't get my camera to focus today. Get this buckle to sit in the vertical and then that solves the problem. I've done that on the passenger side but let me also show you one other little bonus item I've done on the driver's side. So back on the driver's side. Now obviously the problem doesn't exist on the driver's side because you're always wearing a seat belt. Um, I've got the Sport Seats Plus. They're a really comfy seat. They hold the shoulders well, they've got some nice hip bolsters, and the Alcantara is nice and grippy, but, um, you know, so I don't really need a bucket seat. But what I have added is this little extra item on my seatbelt buckles made by Shoft. I'll put a link in the description. All that does is when it's across on the lap, like that, the back of the buckle is uh, up against that rubber which is quite nice and soft and acts as a grip so effectively what you can do is sort of lock off the the lower waist part of the seat belt um, so it doesn't sort of slide around and, you, and you just, you're held in place really firmly um, it's a very personal preference thing absolutely adds nothing to the performance of the car but i like it and uh, works for me and it does have the added benefit of meaning that it really does sit up and out of the way when you open the door so the buckle never gets interfered with by the seat back when you're opening the seat or the roof. So we're back in the car, number 17, and this is the window position hack. What is this? Well, we basically need to teach the window the down and up positions. And why would you need to do that? Well, oftentimes when you disconnect the battery, the window sensors have a bit of a funny moment and can't forget well, I should say can't remember what's up and what's down. So we can re-teach the car what is down and what's up. And that can also help uh, improve around here, potentially some wind noise uh, with the rubber seals in the coupe uh, and actually to be fair in the cabriolet as well. So basically, if you have disconnected your battery and the windows aren't going up properly, or you just fancy resetting them to see if you can improve the wind seal, this is what you do. So ignition on, basically drop the window fully thus and then just very briefly press and hold again the down position for a second or two 
and that tells the car the bottom position. Now, hook your finger in and lift the window the whole way up. And then when it gets to the top, release, and then just lift and hold again for a second or two. And you hear a little click of the relay, and that has relearned the position. And the tell tail for if it's doing its job, so I'm just going to just drop it a little bit now on the one touch. What you're looking for, particularly on the Boxster, it's really easy to tell, is you're looking for a vis visually, but more orally, the glass to snick up and sort of squeeze against the rubber when it goes up. So this is more about a listening exercise than a watching one. I'm not going to worry about the focus too much, but have a little listen. And you can hear it just rub up against the rubber and create a nice seal. And that is the same on the passenger side. So press and lower and release. Press briefly on the, on the lower button again a second time and then lift and hold to close the window always the top release then lift and hold again if the window hasn't been correctly set on that second lift and hold it will go up a little bit further that's what's telling the car the new position you'll hear the solenoid click jobs are good and then release and you are reset and that is how you do your window positions okay number 18 and this is about the onboard computer display. Now I'm not going to do a full video on this because well that's a lot of videoing that uh, is the subject matter of another day but uh, we can configure what we see in this main screen in the three dial display that's common to the Boxers and Caymans and what's useful for me as a driver is to be able to see my various T's and P's temperatures and pressures. So just very briefly what you do you get the screen to this position so the vehicle one push away from you come down to settings push away from you and then you need to go to display and then the vehicle menu and in there you will see the ability to set up to four values for those fields so let's change coolant temperature push away it then gives you the other things you can put in there let's put dist uh, a distance trip time so select that come out of there come out of there come out of there and you will see then that at the top in now is the distance trip time rather than the coolant temperature and you can do that for all four of them so i'm going to go back in again i'm going to go to settings display vehicle menu i'm going to change that back to coolant temperatures i like to know what temperature my water's at there it is uh, no it's not hang on <laughs> go up select and then that's job done you can also add which is to say remove uh, an ice and complete all the way to the bottom you can select a blank line so you can remove one of those four lines yeah exactly that uh, at that point in the display um, and so if you come from a car which has analog displays and you like to see those values that's how you do it okay quite an obscure one this headlight washers now if you've got the hid high intensity discharge or the otherwise known as zenon headlights and you'll know that because you have the little washer nozzle on the front of the bumper pointing back at the lenses then you can manually wash them too and we can do that by finding the wiper stalk here it is and i'm hoping it's in focus and if you look just very discreetly at the bottom here there's a button if you press that button it will do the washer wiper stalky spray thing for you autom um, automatically manually that's the whole point so that is the manual override for the headlight washer function on your boxster cayman 911 and finally for part one of this hacks hints and tips video the interior orientation light which i'm pretty certain all of this generation of cars has got we look up at the rearview mirror, the panel above the driver, and just here, set in there is a tiny little white LED. And to be honest, it's hard to spot even in daylight. It's even harder to spot at night because you sort of don't know where the light source is coming from. But there's an LED in there and it will illuminate. The idea being it illuminates down and generally puts a bit of light around the center console so you can see what you're doing. 
The other thing is it's adjustable. So we go back to our menu here and we go into settings and we can go to light and visibility and we go to interior lights. There it is, it's called the orientation light. You can click into that and you can basically change the brightness of it to suit your driving pleasure and preference. Come out of that, come out of that, and we're job done. So when you next get in your car at night, have a little look at that and uh, enjoy the detail that Porsche provide by illuminating the centre console for us at night. So there we go, part one of my two-parter on hacks. Hints and tips for your Boxster Cayman or 911 now done. 20 or so things that I hope you found useful to learn, know, understand or go, yeah, I already knew that. Thank you, Christian. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, do give me a like and now would be a good time to subscribe to the channel so you get a notification about the next video and other stuff coming up later this autumn. I'd also welcome you jumping in the comments with anything I've missed. It might be in part two. And I'm kind of hoping that I can crowdsource bits and pieces in this if there's enough and if there's enough new material maybe make a third video in this series but for now check out part two coming shortly as ever thank you for watching this one and I'll see you very soon